Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. I thought I would do an update on this Saturday morning, I've got some time off, and I've been working on the BMW refurb. So, just to let you know, this is a 2006 BMW Z4M. I swapped my Nissan for it for a straight swap because it's more suitable for the roads around here. When I got it, the first thing I did is an inspection and I found some rust. Nothing major, but the kind of level where you want to get on top of it now rather than worrying about it later when it starts to be more expensive. Plus, I just like doing it. As well as that, whenever I get a car that I intend to keep for a while, I like to really get to know it, get to know all the nuts and bolts, where any damage is and so on. It's just going to make me maintaining it and keep it in good condition easier all round. So the main rust underneath is on the rear quarter I'd say. So this is the rear wheel wheel here from about there to the back there which is fairly normal I suppose. Here all the way to the front is actually pretty good and now I've got into the meat of it it's actually mercifully good which is great. So first let's start in the engine bay. The first thing I wanted to do is strip not everything out but some stuff out of the engine bay so I can get access to the seals, sorry the rails, just to make sure they're in good condition, give them some treatment inside and out. So the first thing I did was got rid of some bits, I got rid of that um, pump there that warms the engine up, it's not really needed and I'm probably just going to leave it off. I've also got rid of the whole air conditioning system from the bulkhead outwards, all the pipes, the uh, pot, the condenser at the front here. I'm not sure whether it's going to go back or not. Let me know what you think. I don't really need it. I'm never going to use it. But that said, there's not much point in really keeping it off. It doesn't wear a huge amount, so it's not going to make much difference to the driving. But I don't know. I'll see if I can be bothered to put it back or not for the time being, including the uh, uh, pumps down the bottom there. It also allows much better access to the uh, bottom of the engine down there. This black assembly here had some rust on it, so I've uh, got rid of the fur, I've treated it, and I'll probably just leave it like that. I won't bother painting it because uh, a little vanity panel, plastic panel, goes over the top. Anyway, oh, actually, really important point. The AC condenser, which is the bit that goes in front of the radiator here, it would usually go along there, highlighted when I took it out that the front of the radiator, which is this here, was absolutely full of crud, loads of mud. I don't know if it's just particular for this car or not, but it meant that the efficiency of the radiator would have been absolutely terrible, probably down from 100% down to about 40%. Only a tiny bit in the middle wasn't completely clogged, so I very carefully scraped it off and then blew the rest out or most of it out with compressed air. So that's something I would actually consider checking on a Z4 if I got another one for some reason because badly performing radiator can obviously cause problems. In terms of how difficult removing the aircon was, it was incredibly easy. It's all just nuts and bolts, bolts and a few tools. Just be absolutely patient with it. Obviously it's very delicate with aluminium so you just got to be super careful, just tease things apart. As well as that, just a bit of a clean around the engine bay, engine bay. so removing the pipes and stuff allowed me access to the rails and just the chassis around here and it's allowed me to clean it up and put some rust treatment where I needed to. There wasn't a huge deal, to be honest. So that's pretty much the engine bay done for now. I'm going to come back and clean it up and make it all pretty and nice, but for the refurb, that's it done. So for the rest of the car, I had to make a decision what to do. I've had a good look under it now, and I've decided what I'll call a stage one refurb. That is just looking at the chassis. I'm not too worried about the subframes, the suspension arms and stuff like that. It's just not really needed at the moment. But a chassis, it's good to keep on top of. It's also good because it's much easier. It means I don't have to drop any subframes, drop any suspension. So I've started in the wheel wells. Uh, to get to the wheel wells on these, you have to remove those, if you can see there, those plastic splash guards. They're quite substantial in this, these cars here, not anything like anything I've done before. Uh, my advice would be, if you're going to do this, and I suggest you do, I think it's a good fun thing to do if you're into DIY mechanics. Obviously, by the way, I'm not a mechanic, I'm just a DIY guy. My advice is to be super, super careful. If you're super careful, it will come together, it will come apart quite well. Even if the bolts are rusty, and obviously most of these bolts were rusty, I had to snap them off, grind them off. It's just normal old car stuff, but it's okay, it's pretty easy to get around it. You can either weld a stud back on, or a lot of these are actually just actually uh, metal into plastic, if I can see it there. You see a, a bolt will go through into there, into plastic, and they don't seize up obviously, so that's mercifully good. You have to be super careful, and I've already actually broken one of them because the first time I didn't really know what I was doing and I was in a hurry. And when you're doing DIY, you should never really do things in a hurry. And help it. Oh, I can't see it now, but there, you see there's a crack there. Where is this light? 
all the way where the torch is, all the way up there, I've cracked it because I'm a bloody idiot. So I'm gonna have to either sort of fiberglass bodge repair that or get another one, not sure yet. Another reason is I just wasn't thinking carefully enough and I was rushing it, which is stupid of me. I'll get like that sometimes. So it's just be super careful. Also these little, I haven't got them to show you, but it, where these little fixings that go plastic on plastic, I've not seen these before. They've got a little tab in the middle. Actually, it's gonna have a look, might be helpful. So these little guys down here, let's go find one. And can't typically, are these little uh, plastic things here, if that will focus. Now, they look like you just get some pliers around and pull them out. You can't see that gap in the middle. It's because there's actually got these little plastic pins in. You have to push these pins out all the way through to into the bumper of the car. That allows this then to come out. It's not obvious at all. If you're looking at these, it's got this little pin in. So make sure you push this pin out, then this will release. I just forced them out, and of course, I've broken half of them, which is really annoying. So I've got to, I don't know, bodge away around it, or get some new ones, which I doubt I'll be able to do. The primary purpose of getting access to the inside of the wheel wells, front and rear, is to get access to this guy here, the fender lip. So if you can see, that's the edge of the fender that zooms in. And you go around, they always have a, a lip that kind of lips up there, and it's always a weak point because it fills up with um, dirt and stuff over the years and eventually it gets wet and it never really dries out and it will rust the fender lips from the inside out. Pretty much all cars, apart from aluminium cars, have this problem. So the first thing I did was to get up there, clean it all out with a toothbrush thoroughly. I got a mirror to check it was actually clean. Then wash the inside of the lip. Then, I've, I can't really show on the camera, but I've treated the inside of the lip with rust killer because there was corrosion in there and there always will be on anything other than a new car. Then I've painted it inside with just some generic black hammerite and that's it done for another few years. I'm not gonna have to worry about that again. Also, the lip, oh, I don't know if I can really show there, kind of going inside the car as well. Just treated that a few inches in. As for the rest of the wheel well, in terms of what you find once the guard is out is all the metal is just complete mud so you just have to sit there scrubbing it all off like scrubbing the dishes until it is not new looking but you can see the paintwork again which is what we've got here is it worth doing yes definitely because what happens otherwise is when you drive in the rain the rain makes all this mud wet and it will stay like that for hours or days and it eventually rust its way through so it's definitely worth cleaning it up takes almost no effort to be honest so nice clean wheel well all the way up to there. How much rust is there on this one? Almost none at the front, which is great. And so I haven't bothered removing the suspension and the turret tops look fine as they are. So I've just really cleaned it up. There are some little bits of rust around the brackets and stuff, so I've treated it. Also a great chance on the Z4 to get into the engine bay. So I've got into the engine bay, which was all just nasty muck and mud, but you know, just the muck you get there. And I've cleaned it up and it's pretty good now. So I'm happy with that. Uh, brake pipes, they're not too bad in these fronts, but as you can see, they're starting to go. Can you see that kind of, it's not muck, it's corrosion and a bit of rust on them. So what I've done is I've taken them out of their brackets, I've treated them, so these are treated now. I'm not going to paint over them. If you paint over them, it's hard to monitor their deterioration and they will always deteriorate because they're steel. So I've just treated them and then I'm gonna put some copper grease on them. I'm gonna put them back into the clips and just monitor them and they should last quite a long time. I really can't be bothered to redo the brake pipes again. I redid them in my old Nissan. I redid them in, not copper, but Cunifer and it's great and it'll last forever, but it's such a pain in the butt to do. Now, I said we weren't gonna be doing subframes in this kind of stage one refurb, uh, and I've not because it's a passive pain in the butt, and they were very rusty, but it was all surface rust. So all I've done is, that's the big lip of the subframe there, is gone to and put a load of rust treatment, rust, 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 rust convert and primer on them, and I'm gonna leave them like that. If you can see it there, you see a little bit of brown through there, but it was all completely brown now. It's all treated and it won't last forever, obviously, but it will last until I do a big stage refurb where I take it all off and strip it down properly and repaint it. So subframes are just gonna go with a basic bit of protection on them. In terms of uh, suspension, this was a nice treat. I found that it's got bill side suspension on it, so bonus. In terms of knuckles and stuff, I don't know what you can see down there. Uh, obviously it'll be rusty because it's pretty much just mild steel completely untreated. Um, I'll probably maybe put some rust converter on it, just the same as what I've done with the subframe, just to uh, keep it in check. And then eventually, when I do a bigger refurb, I'll take them all apart, strip them down, and um, uh, do them properly, bring them back to new. 
something I quite enjoy doing. Calipers and everything are fine, you know, everything's got a bit of wear and tear on it, but it's not worth doing anything about. Discs are okay. Other wheel well is pretty much the same. Moving on to the underside of the car, if we can get under. I have removed all the uh, panels and covers and uh, the car like this is covered in panels and stuff like that. It's a bit of pain, but once they're off, they're off. It was just completely caked in mud and crap down here, so I've cleaned it, and it's now like a lovely new car. Look at that. Bo -bo 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 -bo. Just like it's come out of the factory, all the way back to where the trouble starts at this kind of rear bulkhead here. Cleaned it up. I've removed all these lines, all these brackets and stuff, and cleaned underneath them as well and put them back on. Same on the other side. I don't know what you can see there, but it's all super clean. Ba -ba. Almost no rust in it, which is absolutely wonderful. Really good quality metal and paint they must have done on it. Brake pipes uh, have corroded. You can see corrosion starting in there uh, in various places. I've got to make the decision, I've obviously removed them from the clips, uh, whether to treat them and refit them or replace them. I, I don't know, what do you think? I've seen a lot worse and they were a lot worse on the Nissan, hence why I replaced them on the Nissan. I get the feeling I'm probably going to treat these, just put rust converter, primer, probably won't bother painting them for the reason I said before, you know, they will rust eventually and it's going to be easier to monitor them that way. Put them back and that will probably do, at least for this section of the car. You can see some distortion in the shape there and it's not, you know, it's not something you can rub off. That is what's happened to the paint and metal. It's, it's changing shape and corroding. In terms of the seals, uh, all pretty nice really. You can see little bits of rust there where uh, it's inevitable uh, stone chips and where fools who try and jack the car up, not on the proper jacking point, but uh, on the sill lip there. So what I would do is I'll get my grinder out and I'll grind the rust off and grind the paint back further than I need to. And then I'll put rust treating on. And then I'll just put some paint, just some black paint or hammerite or whatever I've got laying around. Pretty much the same all the way. I don't know what you can see back there, but again, that's a little bit of uh, rust there that I'm gonna deal with. And then I'll strip it back all the way until the rust stops, then go further, and then I'll do that. I've removed um, this skirt just where I had to. So I've had a good look at, uh, upstairs at the top of the skirt. I didn't really need to re remove it. It looked clean enough. So I've just removed it down the bottom here where I can pull it away. Don't worry, the car is it does have safety blocks on in case it tips over and had a good clean inside there and around here and it's all nice and clean now obviously it's just mud complete mud literally a uh, shoe box full of mud came out of this as you'd expect um, now a really important point when doing these these seal lips or seal flanges is that they get caked in mud immediately and blocked up and this is what eventually kills uh, a lot of seals or causes a lot of problems. So what you have to do and it's a pain in the ass job but you have to go through and get the drainage gullies and pick all the mud out. So this would have to be just, just mud and crud and crap that comes here. So you have to get one of these things and you have to put it through and make sure it goes all the way through to the seal because that is how the water, even if it's just constant condensation, even if you keep the car inside, this water is going to get in there somehow and it needs to drain out and drip out. So you go through, do every single one of these, like I said, that's a pain in the butt, just enough so that water can come out and then the seals can drain. So that's how it's designed on all cars as far as I'm aware and causes a lot of problems. So that's good one good reason, another good reason why we're doing this. Uh, so it's great, these panels are lovely and don't need any work at all really. Um, it's really tempting just to protect your car. People think you can go and slap a load of wax oil or something on the bottom. I would absolutely recommend against that. That's what I used to do when I was a noob. To be honest, it just causes more troubles than it's worth, especially, actually, let me take that back. If you do have rusty panels, it's quite tempting just to slap a load of wet uh, wax oil or similar on it. That won't help at all. In fact, if anything, it actually makes the rust slightly worse. The only way of treating these things when they're rusty is to get your angle grinder out, spend hours and just take 
week, all of the rust back to the mild steel until there's no more rust left. Then put some treater on it, I would suggest, or at least some zinc primer on it. Then paint it, and then don't put anything else. I personally wouldn't even suggest putting wax oil or, or anything like that on it. Uh, I've learned that because I've actually set fire to a car by accident. What I didn't realise was all paint burns, but a paint like this is generally going to be fine. If you put a wax oil on it, it's just like almost like putting crude oil on it. And once I was welding my Nissan when I did have some wax oil underneath, um, and it just caught fire, and the whole bottom where all the wax oil all caught fire, and I thought, ah. This is a really stupid idea, hence I'll never touch it again. So now, whenever I do uh, a refurb, it's just take it back until all the rust is gone, even, after you, even if you have to cut through right through the metal and weld new metal in. Uh, rust converter, rust treater, zinc primer, whatever you want to do there, and then paint you know, a decent tough hammerite or something on top of that, and then probably just leave it like that. That's what I'll always do from now on. Uh, that's pretty much as far as I've got. It's taken a few hours, but it always does. Exhaust is full of holes, um, so exhaust is going to come off, and. I'm gonna deal with it, whatever I've got to do. Uh, it actually appears to be mild steel from factory. A factory car with mild steel, is that the coolest thing ever? And a tubular manifold from factory. Super jacked about that. Uh, yeah, I'll deal with that. That's as far as I've got at the moment. I'm gonna finish off here, uh, up to that point on both sides, refit the uh, skirts and stuff like that, treat the brake pipes, give it a final clean up, and then that's the car pretty much for this stage of reverb done up to here. Then we've got to go back and uh, start tackling the rear, and we'll do that another weekend. I'll catch up with you later.